Hello, this is Grinstar, and today I am presenting what I am calling Tambertron 5000. Uh, it's a preset uh, that I created in Bitwig uh, that uses the, the chain uh, um, module here. Uh, and it, its sole purpose is that when I'm pressing keys, It produces a different timbre uh, on each different of the four, and then uh, sometimes when you click on it, it changes the timbre. Uh, so basically, it's a it's a timbre uh, generatron or something. I don't know. Kind of silly. I, I thought about this while I was on a walk, and I was like, I was like, uh, um, mostly I was just trying to not understanding what timbre was originally. Um, and it's the characteristic of how an instrument sounds. It's a, it's a description of the difference between a guitar and a, a stringed instrument like a violin or maybe a, a bass, a brass instrument like a flute uh, or a trumpet. And you have descriptions for it like brassy or uh, um, uh, reedy or like in the case of clarinets and stuff like that. And basically descriptions for it, uh, you can actually have tone colors uh, and and or using colors to describe timbre. Uh, and I was looking this up and trying to understand it a lot better because normally when I'm learning about uh, music theory and, and, and how to describe music and stuff like that, and there's timbre always thrown around. And on the Arturia keyboards, there's always a timbre button. Um, and and you mess with it and it changes the sound somewhat. And basically, timbre can be, uh, literally anything can change it uh, of an instrument. Uh, you can use an EQ to change the timbre. You can use the... Um, the uh, envelope uh, and make it a pluck sound or a big long string sound and it'll change the timbre. Uh, so in this one I'm playing around and, and I'm, I'm using uh, this performance thing here to, to help with uh, changing around the timbre. And as you notice that basically what happens is that if you don't select anything, nothing will come out. If you select one thing, it'll produce a sound. Uh, and if you try to select two things or more than two things, you get these right here are blue, which means that they're uh, disabled. And there's a reason for that. All right, and now I want to show exactly how this thing is constructed. Uh, so this is a chain, uh, and it's going into this polygrid, uh, and this polygrid's kind of wickedly cool. Uh, so these buttons that I have on here are tied to these buttons here, and these buttons go straight into these uh, uh, modulators. Sorry, these modulators can modulate what's ever in the effects. Uh, and then, uh, so whenever you click a button, I have them also um, to the, uh, the, that they basically affect the other buttons uh, that they turn these buttons off. And you do that by, by uh, uh, um, let's see, oh, right here, sorry. Uh, when I when I set this modulator, I have it I have it uh, so I have it modulating an X and Y, and then all three of the buttons by turning them off negative one, uh, so that that it disables them. Uh, and also, uh, what's going on is is that I want to for every time I I touch one of these buttons, I want it to set this counter uh, and modulate something else. Uh, and that then I'm going to show you later what it's modulating, uh, as well as this has got an overall one. Uh, oh, this this does the the sound I think, or I think this is the sound. 
Um, so anyways, let's look into these effects. I got an XY instrument. Uh, surprise, surprise. And what this does is on these key presses, uh, if you notice the, the little blue dot here, when I click on it, it goes to a quadrant. And then because I, I didn't want to mix the, the sounds, um, basically I disabled them so that it, it won't be able to go to another quadrant until you click on that button. So now I got to go to the D quadrant. So what's in these quadrants is an instrument selector uh, that's tied to, uh, as you can see right here, that's tied to uh, this uh, selector up here. So basically when this cycles, it goes through all of the instruments based upon the key press uh, and then I have it cycling. Uh, and so basically I have, I have a lot of pigments, a lot of CS80s in here. I got uh, Mellotrons, Junos, and Contact. This is, uh, you heard it. And then I got a lot of pigments and SEM instruments in this one. And I got a couple of, uh, basically a lot of Arturia instruments. Uh, and then I got their basic presets set already and then, and then categorized within my buttons. So you click on a category and boom, you're hearing basses. You click, click on a category, you're hearing pads. You click on a category, you're, hear, you're hearing keys. Uh, so basically, when I'm pressing it <clears throat> on the pads here, you hear a very quiet Solana for some reason. Oh, that's what the that's what the other thing is. This right here is tied to this output. So basically, I don't want to hear anything if nothing's selected. So I, I turn off everything, and then this turns it back up whenever something's selected. So if I click on the pads, the 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 output goes up, and then and it enables this stuff right here. Uh, I could have probably also disabled uh, or or use this to to turn off and on uh, the the uh, um, the instruments themselves rather than doing the output. In fact, I think that's probably a better idea. So let me crank that back up uh, and then go here and then turn it off and go here, turn it off. And by the way, to turn it off, you can, you, you, you have to look at the purple uh, that's, that's in here, here, turn it off. So you can get, you turn it off or do you and turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. And I'm moving my mouse down to turn it off and, and moving it up to turn it on. And ultimately, I think I, I messed this up. I want to shut these all off. And then if this is on, I mean, if this is this is selected or this goes a positive, I want it to turn the module on. So only if this is if this is cranking out a positive number, do I want it to turn it on. All right, and then this is still tied to an output somewhere. All right. So this is off, nothing selected. Much better. Uh, 
overall pretty cool uh, the bitwig allows a lot of experimentation and uh between the the the, the grid here and then the modules down here are the the um, instruments whatever and the, the the different ways that you can set up these instruments allows you to to have a whole lot of fun in experimenting with your sound uh and creating different timbres uh if you so will uh it's kind of funny kind of hokey uh but i love it uh Usually, usually uh, these these kind of ideas are, are while I'm walking and, and I'm like, well, what I'm gonna do it for a video, uh, and immediately this came to this came to life uh, when I when I was researching stuff and, and how to how to uh, mess around with the uh, uh, actually I'm gonna say I, I wanted to create a something with a lot of buttons. Uh, I'm still gonna probably create something with a lot of buttons that changes a lot of the sound. Um, just to, so that you could be a mad scientist or a, a nuclear control center person. Um, basically, you got or a, a, basically a mixer guy that that is in front of a console with like just like a sea of buttons, uh, and every one of those buttons changes the sound somehow. Uh, you have no clue what they do. It's just they're they're all not labeled anything. It's just you you just pick a pick a knob, turn it, and it alters the sound somehow. Uh, that's that's the ultimate kind of cool thing I want to I want to try doing. Um, I've always been fascinated with a lot of buttons and knobs, including in sound, and this is one of the things that got me to love synthesizers as a kid. Uh, is the ability to adjust a knob and and play with the sound, but you don't understand how it's going to affect that sound, and you're pleasantly surprised every button combination you try. Um, and that's kind of why I want these buttons to change its sound. Um, that that basically when you click them you have a chance of creating another sound. Uh, so basically you can have something else automating these button clicks uh, and be able to cycle through different types of sound. Or I can turn off the the fact that it it mutes it and blend um, blend these keys together and have it have it turn this off so that when both of them go together it becomes uh, more of a a middle ground rather than than turning it off. So if I go here um, on this one. And I go take off the buttons and then click these. That's this one, it's it's off. Right? Yeah. Well that's interesting. It takes over. All right, let's let's experiment a bit. I'm gonna remove the modulations for the buttons, because what I want to do is is have it back to the natural state of when I wasn't turning them off. So now when it goes in, there we go. It's a little bit of chaos. Um, oh, overall, I, I think I think putting the buttons back and and having them shut off all the other buttons, uh, so you can't you can't do this, uh, gives a better sound overall than than trying to the chaos that that it, it has when it's trying to flip because there's there's not really a good a really good sound in between it ish. I don't know. Up to your discretion. You can rebuild it how you like. Uh, if you like the buttons on, if buttons off, or just don't build it at all. It's up to you. Uh, at any rate, your perfect world. I just live in it. Um, if you like the video, a thumbs up it, I guess. If you don't, yeah, doesn't really matter. Uh, <laughs> but I really do hope you like it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for listening. And as always, I will catch you later.